scale up your targeting. When you're publishing on Facebook and Twitter, you can use hashtags. This is definitely true with Instagram. Regardless of the platform you're on, make sure you play around with how you categorize or tag your content. In any niche, there are many different tags available. Experiment with these. See which tags get the most attention from the social media platform you're sharing a piece of content on. Of course, you're not going to find the magical combination of hashtags overnight. That's not going to happen. This is one of those things that you're going to have to find out by doing it over a long period of time. Still, when you run these experiments, a pattern should emerge. Sooner or later, you would discover that certain hashtags produce a lot more results than others. They draw a lot more eyeballs. They get a lot more attention. Most importantly, they get a lot more engagement. Stick with those. Experiment with tagging niche-focused influencers. When you're doing research on hashtags on Twitter, for example, you would be able to find influencers that specialize in those hashtags. These people just love to post content related to certain topics. They use a narrow range of hashtags every time they post. It seems that's all they focus on. Find these people. Look at their content. Are people retweeting them a lot? Are they getting a lot of love for their content? Do they get a lot of engagement? Are people responding via Twitter? It should be fairly easy to see which accounts are influential in your niche and which aren't. Don't just focus on how many followers they have. Instead, look at the total amount of engagement they get and also pay attention to the ratio of followers they have to the number of accounts they follow. For example, if I find Mike Smith to be a big poster in my niche because it seems that he just seems to rotate among the 10 hashtags that are most relevant to my niche, I look at his followers in relation to the number of accounts he's following. If he's only following one person, yet he's being followed by 15,000 people, Mike Smith might be an influential person. I say that he might be because I'm also going to have a look at the engagement levels of his posts. Are his posts getting a lot of retweets? Are a lot of people responding? Are a lot of people clicking the heart icon? If his content has these factors, then his account is probably worth following. Most importantly, you should tag influential people on Twitter when you post. You use your most powerful hashtags and you mention them in your post. This can help you get on their radar. These people would be put on notice that you are also sharing content that is similar to the stuff that they are interested in. If they check out your stuff and they like what they see, don't be surprised if they share your content with their following. Engage with them. Let them know about your questions or suggestions. In fact, you should engage with them so much that you can possibly create a relationship where they would publish your guest posts if they're bloggers or discuss whatever it is you're doing on their social media platforms. At the very least, when you partner with them, they become part of your content distribution network. In fact, a lot of them can even get you interviewed on influential blogs in your niche. Don't think that influencer engagement is simply restricted to tagging people. That's just the beginning. That's actually the tip of the iceberg. They can do so much more for you. You just have to continuously engage them and be social. This doesn't mean that you have to kiss their butt. This doesn't mean that your stock response to all of their posts is amazing post or a great post. I love it. That's not going to work. That's not going to push the ball far enough. You have to actually engage. And oftentimes, this might seem like you're criticizing them. This might seem that you are offering a negative view, but you need to get their attention. You need to bring home the point that you actually know your stuff and that you are also credible in the same niche space. That's how you get them to take you seriously. That's the kind of engagement that builds respect. Otherwise, you're just going to look like another member of the choir. They really don't have any incentive to interview you or post your guest content. Why should they? You're not really sharing any information or suggesting any points of view that are different or distinctive. Experiment with paid traffic. Only after you have spent a lot of time drumming up free traffic from social media marketing should you even think of buying traffic. I know this sounds a bit extreme, but it's the absolute truth. Why? Well, in the beginning, you don't know when your target audience members will be reading your content. In the beginning, you don't know what their demographic breakdown looks like. How many males compared to females are in your audience pool? Do males or females like certain types of content that you share? What are their age ranges? Where are they located? I hope you see the big picture here. You have to use free traffic to do initial audience intelligence. Once you've gotten all these important insights, you can then start paying for Facebook ads and other platforms ads. If you start any earlier than this point, you probably would end up wasting your money. Study your statistics first. Pay close attention to audience patterns. Take out ads based on these patterns. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.